Yo, good afternoon to all my patrons. Thank you for taking this time to continue with your lessons on the Hermetic Laws. And um, today we're going to get into the Law of Principle, uh, Law of Principle, Law of Polarity. Law of Polarity coming from the book, The Kabbalion. All right? Now, hopefully you've been reading The Kabbalion, you've bought it, you've downloaded whatever you've done, that you have it, and you've been reading it and you're gaining deeper understanding. I also hope that you all already have listened to the video on gender, um, the four videos that dealt with the law of mentalism, the video of um, the law of correspondence, as well as the previous video to this one, which is the law of vibration, because there are key points of understanding if, from those videos that you will need in this one. So let's go ahead and jump into this one. The law of polarity, I'm not going to keep you as long. It's very simple in its wording, e uh, easy to understand, yet it is work to accomplish it in the mental state. The law of polarity is really about you being able to elevate your mind, to free your mind, to be able to see things exactly as they are so that you can then learn how to or realize how to vibrate on a scale to raise your consciousness, your mental state, physical state, your spiritual state. Let me tell you a little story. Most of you know how to train an elephant. You take a baby elephant, you tie a rope around his leg, drive a stake into a ground and remove him from his parents. That baby elephant will struggle and will cry out. But eventually it gives up. Eventually it realizes that it cannot remove itself. It cannot free itself from the stake. Year after year after year after year this is done. The elephant grows. It grows stronger. It grows stronger physically. But mentally it is enslaved to the rope and the stake. Many people in their lives are enslaved to the rope and the stake of bad marriages, bad credit, bad health, um, bad upbringing, bad religious teachings bad mental teachings, just poor understandings of life. Yet when they become adults, they still don't free themselves from these bad teachings, from these bad habits. Um, Napoleon Hill called it hypnotic rhythm. This hypnotic rhythm keeps you entrapped, keeps you enslaved. Harry Tubman said that I would have freed more slaves had they known that they were slaves. It is the mental enslavement that the law of polarity looks to free you from. So let's look at the axiom for it. Everything is dual, everything has its poles, everything has its pair of opposites. Likes and unlikes are similar, are, well, are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet, all truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. Basically, there are two sides to every coin. It is still the coin, but it has opposite sides. There are opposite sides in everything, no matter what it is. To everything, there is a yin and yang, so to speak. There is the same, but they all exist on the same scale, the same polarity. Even that of spirit and matter exists on the same scale. The Kabbalion says that they begin by showing that spirit and matter are but the two poles of the same thing. The intermediate planes being merely degrees of, vib degrees of vibration, everything in between just being vibration. The all and the many are the same. The difference being merely the matter of degree of mental manifestation, meaning that all things will manifest based on its mental mental state. That the difference between the all and the many, the difference between law and laws, the difference between principle and principles, the difference between infinite mind and finite mind are just degrees of manifestation. The infinite mind manifests on a different lane, different plane than the infinite than, than the finite mind. Just as well as the animal mind exists differently and manifests differently, the plant mind, the, min the mineral mind, and the elemental mind, and so on and so forth. There are many degrees and variations. Go back to the law of correspondence and you will understand that a little bit deeper, how the law of polarity responds and reacts and interplays with where you are on the scale determines your manifestations. And it also determines the manifestations of any and everything. So we must understand that. It's just as, let me give you an example. The, the, in the Kabbalion, they talk about the thermometer shows many degrees of temperature. Where does hot begin? Where does cold end? Although we may call this hot and this is cold, where is the absolute? Where is the change? Where is the definitive line in the sand that says that this is where hot begins and cold ends? Is it at 70 degrees? Is it at 50 degrees? Is it at 60 degrees? Now, right now, you would say that it's all relative, right? It's all relative. But there is no place on the thermometer where heat ceases and cold begins. It is all a matter of higher and lower vibration. Meaning that if I say it's 70 degrees right now, I go one temperature up, it's hotter. I go one temperature down, 
it's cold. But let's say I was at 68 degrees. Well, that 69 that was colder at 70 is now hotter when I'm starting at 68. At 67, it's now colder. So temperature is the pole. And that's what we must begin to understand. What is the pole that we're dealing with? East and west. As far as I go to the east, eventually I end up to what I would call west. If I turn around, take five steps, now what I previously just called east, I mean called west, is now east. So it is all relative. If I continue to travel north, eventually I begin to travel south. So it is all relative. It is all the same in its distance. But one thing that we must understand is that it is all definitely the same and repetitive. C, the music. On the scale of music, we start with C, we go up the scale, we eventually start with another C. Any musician would tell you that the there are eight instead of seven to the musical scale. The reason why they say that is because the C repeats. Infinite mind repeats. As far as we go to the lower, we come back to the upper. Now, we must understand that things are on the same scale. That there is no such thing as absolute good and absolute bad. There is no absolute evil and absolute good. There is no absolute heat and absolute cold. That there is nothing absolute. There is merely degrees. Always one degree higher is better, is, high, is more positive, is higher than the previous degree. So even though the most vile person has one degree, or, or they, their, their mentality, their activity is one degree higher than someone else who is who participates in, in, in more dastardly acts. Uh, even those people, they vibrate differently on different degrees themselves. They, they may hate, the, the racists may hate anyone who is different from them, but yet they love the ones who are the same. Or they hate this group, but love that group. Or they hate this whole group, but love the smaller individual who looks the same as that group. There is duality within it, and there is no absolute to it. So when we say a person is absolutely evil or absolutely ignorant or absolutely hateful or absolutely whatever, there is no truth to that. It is but a half truth because there is always a degree above and below. So we must understand as above, so below. Um, so nothing is absolute good, absolute evil, and all things are subject to law. All things. All things. I'm going to leave that right there for you to ponder that all things are subject to law, just as love and hate exist on the same plane. Now, let us understand this, um, that all things exist and can only be transmuted, mentally transmuted, transmutation can only occur on similar planes. It cannot occur on planes that differ, planes that don't or don't correspond with one another. And it is this fact that enables the hermitess to transmute one mental state to another along the lines of polarization. Things belonging to different classes, however, cannot be transmuted into one another, but things of the same class may be changed. We cannot change heat into dull, cold into sharp. We can't change fear into love, courage into hate. They exist on different planes. They exist on, as different classes, and there are an innumerable number of classes. So, when a person says that I fear that I may lose you, so therefore I'm going to, through fear, I will love you more, but yet show jealousy, show anger, show abuse, show verbal abuse. They are, sorry for the interruption, I'm halfway done. I'm not gonna start over, but um, here's the thing, we, um, things can't change. So although you may be showing, somebody may be showing this kind of effect towards a person, this kind of, they may be loving them out of fear. Their, their love is actually closer to the hate of the polarity scale of emotional or romantic emotion or, or family, family emotion. They're, they're along the scale of hate, their fear, although they are confused thinking they're making their fear into love, they're really making their fear that fear is only existing on the scale of fear and courage, not love and hate, but the effects of their fear change the mental state onto the level of hate instead of the level of love. It's creating more hate, less love, however you want to say it, than it does create more love. 
So therefore, we must understand the plane that the, the, the pole. The pole of fear must now be transmuted. The energy of fear must be transmuted. The mental state of fear must be transmuted to that of courage, to that of confidence within the relationship so that the person will exist, uh, will vibrate on the scale of love and hate more into love. They do affect one another, but they are not the same. So if we want to um, not operate in fear, then we have to operate in courage. And when we operate in courage, we then can operate in higher degrees of love. We operate in higher degrees of discipline towards our, toward, in, 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 when it comes to finances, when it comes to happiness, when it comes to any different, or any different scale of the multitude, we operate differently based on how we are operating in one. And they all are connected. Everything is connected. So we want to understand that. And, and the, the, some people do this without thinking, without thought, and, and it just works for them. But others uh, who have understood this and grasped it, they know how to manage and maintain their mental state and realize that the mental states belong to innumerable classes. And by working through each, by understanding what class you're working in, you then can change the vibration and move up the scale for that class, affecting all other classes that you are also simultaneously working on by changing the degree that you exist. Um, but this works on the physical plane and the, and, and the mental plane and spiritual plane, on all, of, all three of the great planes. Now in that plane, the nature in itself wants to honor, wants to give more energy, has a tendency to, to go in the direction of the dominant activity along the positive scale. Now positive and negative is something that we have determined it to be, but is really about rate of vibration. The higher the vibration is what nature wants to reward and be a part of and, and move towards. Attraction comes towards that which is more positive, which vibrates higher. So the faster, the higher your vibration, go back to the law, the law of vibration, the higher your vibration, the further along the scale, uh, on, the, on the right side of the scale, the positive side of the scale, you move along, the more you're able to manifest that which you truly desire in your life. and. As I said earlier, your manifestations are currently based on where you are, what degree of the scale you're on. Your love, your money, your health, your wealth, all these things are, are manifesting based on your vibration of the scale that you're on. So when we understand that, when we take that phenomenon, we then can begin to influence our own mental state. And that way we will have our mind over matter, we will have our mind over spirit, we will have you will move further up the if, if finite mind is here and infinite mind is there the further we move up the scale towards infinite mind the more we're able to manifest our lives right so now here's the other part of that there's the idea of mental induction mental induction is something we do to ourselves by repeatedly vibrating on a higher scale how do we do this we can do this through meditation but see many people think simply through meditation and i'm going to do an entire thing on this one but meditation must first be done and set up based on how you live your life. The more focus you put on every detail of your life, when you're talking to someone, total focus. When you're doing your work, give total focus. When you're eating, give total focus to the meal. When you're watching something on TV, give total focus to it. The more you give total focus to something, all things throughout your day, when it comes time for meditation, you're able to give more total focus towards meditation. It's about setting up your life in order to benefit your meditation so that your meditation can then benefit your life. The infinity symbol is what I'm gonna, I want you guys to see in that one. So as mental scientists, we bring, uh, scientists bringing our, his, our mind, uh, bringing his mind up to the desired vibration by his trained will and thus obtaining the desired polarization in his own case, then produce a similar mental state in others. Meaning that when you increase your vibration, others around you vibration will increase as well if they're not the energy vampires if you do not allow yourself to become to allow leeches to attach to you how do you recognize these leeches you recognize them by your experience your emotional state your mental state when they depart from you i've been in that situation where i meet someone i talk to someone and when, after we leave i feel energized they feel energized now it, it, it must be that both people feel energized that you are sharing an infinity with one another your energy is reciprocal is reciprocated is reconciled 
when I walk away energy up, they walk away energy down, then I was an energy vampire towards them. Now, if I walk away energy depleted and they walk away energy up, then they were an energy vampire towards me. Now, most people hopefully are not doing this purposely, but we must rem remember that we have to get into a space where both people walk away energetically up in order for us to know that we are reciprocating because although we cannot manage what happens after this existence, what we can manage is what happens during this existence. No one's been to heaven and back. No one's been to hell and back. No one's been to samadhi or nirvana and back. All people do exist in this life and what we do know is that it, at some point this finite existence ends. During that time, we have control over our energy and mental state. Mm -hmm. Understanding the pole helps us to manage the, the, the energy and mental state that we're in in this existence, to be able to enrich our lives, enlighten our lives, enlighten our being, our substance, to be able to go and become greater versions of ourselves. But we must be wary of people who will try to take that away from us. So, we must be mentally strong to recognize when we are inducting or being inducted upon. We do not want to be tied to a stake with a rope around our leg, knowing that we can get out, but not knowing that we can get out, okay? So understanding the pull helps you to do this. What it says is that um, a, a knowledge of the existence of the great hermetic principle will enable the student to better understand his own mental state and of those and of those other people to change his mental poles and thus be master of his mental state instead of being a servant or slave. Harry Tubman again said, I would have freed more if only they knew that they were slaves. We first have to understand what pole we're working on. And then where are we on the pole? Then we can start to vibrate through activities that increase our vibration. Many people, like I said, will just start meditating. But you're meditating, you've been unfocused all day. Now you expect to be focused. You've been undisciplined all day. Now you expect to be disciplined. You have to practice these things. This year we will go have many lessons on how to take utilize tools to change our health, specifically. To change our finances, specifically. To change our relationships, specifically. We will go through many different trainings throughout the course of 2018 to increase you, your, your vibration, to move you up the pole of your desire. But in first, we must understand what is your true desire. Can you ask yourself that question? You exist on a pole, but what is your true desire? What is your true state of being that you truly want to be at? Your true desire to be as far as a relationship is concerned, as far as your finances is concerned, as far as your health is concerned, as far as the happiness is concerned. Where, where do you want to be? And the idea is not to chase those things, but to create a life that enables those things to manifest. You see, people want to manifest things. They, they say, I'm gonna manifest this, I'm gonna speak this into existence. But it's not about speaking something into existence. It's not about having just the vision of something, but it's about building and creating a life that attracts that thing. Remember in the law of correspondence, it says that the elemental mind and the animal mind, the plant mind, the human mind, the infinite mind, they have element, they have things they like, they have their likes and dislikes, their attractions and their repulsions. So you have to realize what is it that will repulse the life that I do not desire and what will attract the life that I want, I do desire. If I desire more health, can I sit idly by and say that my, I'm predisposed to, to diabetes and bad health, to big bonedness, to whatever? Am I predisposed to anything? Or is it my diet? Is it my lack of exercise? That is what we look at. And when we look at those things, we start to build a life of good eating habits, a life of good exercise and activity that attracts good health. And it will induct, induce other people around us to either flee from us or draw near us. They will either be repulsed or they will be attracted. And we have to be aware of the type of people that are being attracted and those that being repulsed. Now the ones being repulsed are easy. They don't want to be around it. They don't want to deal with it. We don't have to worry about them. But the ones being attracted, are they being attracted because they want to suck our energy out? Are they being attracted because they want us to stay, they want us to stay in the misery of unhealth with them? Or are they being attracted because they too 
has decided, has decided that, that moving up the scale is a must. Not a want, but a must. That their will is that it must be a, uh, it must be a must so that their me begins the becoming of that will. All right? Remember it says that the, it is the will, right? It is that a mental scientist bringing his own mind up to the desired vibration by his trained will. We must train our will, our I, to create and manifest on the scale, on, in this reality, what we decide, what we want. All right? Because remember, it says the all and the many are the same, the difference being merely a matter of degree of mental manifestation. All things are mental, all things manifest based on the mental. So we have to pull those stakes up. But I hope you guys have, I know you guys have learned something from this lesson. Take this into your life and let's start thinking about it. Prepare yourself because as we begin 2018, if you're watching this much later, um, then catch up to all the videos. But prepare yourself because for 2018, I'm gonna teach you guys something very vital. 2018 is gonna be a great year for you. All right, it's gonna be an awesome, awesome, awesome year for everyone. All right, everyone who is listening and participates. Let me put it that way. If you participate and you're listening, you're going to have a great year in 2018. So remember to free yourself to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is not negotiable. And I thank you again, all my patrons. I really appreciate what you're doing because this, this is my mental manifestation. This is my vibration to do this for you, to do this on a consistent basis all the time. This is my desire. So have a great day. Enjoy yourself. Free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is not negotiable.